Imagine, a podcast series by Imagine Theatre. Hello again, I'm Martin Ballard and welcome to episode 67. And with the panto season already underway, I've been joined by the star of an Imagine show who's making his panto debut this year. For more information, go to their website at www.imaginetheatre.co.uk. In the last episode, I was back at Imagine headquarters to catch up with joint CEO, business and marketing director Sarah Bowden. With costumes and sets arriving at venues all over the UK, some shows in rehearsals and others already open. So don't forget if you missed that or any of the other previous episodes, you can of course still listen to them. We've had some fabulous guests from Imagine Theatre headquarters team members to performers and backstage teams at the various Imagine shows. We've talked about how pantomime is produced, its history and of course its future. And we've also been behind the scenes. There are many more episodes to come as well from one of the UK's biggest producers of pantomime and children's theatre. Now this time, I've been joined by the radio and television presenter and actor, BBC Radio 2's Scott Mills, who makes his panto debut for Imagine Theatre this year in Leicester. How are you, Scott? Hello. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, You just described me as an actor. Well, you are. You've done a number of acting roles on television, haven't you? Don't be modest. I've done a bit. I mean... I'll be honest, the roles that I have done on uh, television haven't really stretched me. I played myself in an episode of that show called Skins, which used to be on Channel 4. That wasn't that hard. Then I, actually, more recently, I was in Hollyoaks. Yeah. And I did I did have a speaking part in that. That was part of the kind of um, the Eurovision, the, the lead up to Eurovision this year. So, um the storyline was that I got lost on my way to Liverpool to Eurovision and ended up in Hollyoaks, which is completely plausible. But, do you know, on that day, they said to me, you know what, you can act. And I was like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so um, I, I took that as a massive compliment. But, yeah, and, and then various roles in, uh, sometimes non-speaking, in uh, Casualty, The Bill... So, yeah, I've, I've done a bit. Yeah, and, and Edinburgh as well, of course. Talk about that in a moment. But yeah. it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. After all, you went to Shakespeare Primary, didn't you? I did go to Shakespeare Primary. Good <laughs> research. Yeah. Um, no, I love it. You're right about Edinburgh. Um, we did my show up there for about five years, uh, and that was such a lot of fun. I'm actually planning to – I haven't been back since because the summer is always busy for me, but – I actually think next year I am going to take a week off and just go there because I absolutely loved it. Some of my favourite shows and favourite times that we've ever had were in Edinburgh at the festival. So did you ever do any school shows or any sort of performing as a youngster? I was very shy as a kid. And this is why I like to do things that push me out of my comfort zone a little bit now. If you had seen me when I was, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, you would have seen quite a, 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 an introverted boy. I remember, funnily enough, at Shakespeare school, we had to do a play, which was Shakespeare. And uh, I was the bard, so I was the narrator. I remember I had to borrow some of my nan's tights but it didn't sit comfortably with me. I was terrified. And this is why, now that I have a little more confidence, I try and do something really every year or every other year that pushes me out of my zone and things that 10-year-old Scott would have never done. For instance, Strictly Come Dancing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And this, Um, now. But what about as a kid, did you ever go and see Panto um, at the Mayflower or somewhere nearby? Yeah. I did. I, I, we often would have a trip to the the Mayflower for the panto. I, I mean, it's it's a very British experience, isn't it, panto? I was trying to explain it to one of my American friends recently, and they're like, "What? Well, so it's variety show, but there's jokes for kids, but also the adults get it. It's very hard to explain, and I'm not even sure that they have." panto anywhere else it's a very it's part of christmas in the uk and i think that we need to hold on to that and for me it feels like panto is having a massive 
resurgence at the moment. Some of the people you see doing it, it's um, I think it's very easy to be snobbish about Panto uh, or has been in the past and be like, oh, doing Panto, are you? There's no, absolutely no shame in it. In fact, it should be celebrated because it's one of our great British Christmas traditions. Everyone loves it. Everyone gets joy from it. And you've got people like Jennifer Saunders doing Panto now. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, and what's more important for me is that it's an open door to theatre for many people who will never, ever go at any other time of the year. And it's the first uh, experience yep. for children as well, as it would have been for you at the Mayflower all those years ago. It was. And it's very exciting. You know, you're absolutely right. It's the first time that I ever went into a theatre and the lights go up and the crowd around you. And yes, it is entry level to theatre. And that's really important because I remember, you know, I, I think that what we used to do is we we would do our Christmas shopping in Southampton and then we would go and see the panto and long may that continue. So do you remember anything about those early pantos that you saw and what you particularly liked about them? I just remember enjoying the silly jokes, the ridiculous costumes, the songs. And then years later... I've just had a flashback to this. Um, <laughs> on my Radio 1 show, we were talking about Panto. This was years ago. And um, Brian Blessed was in a Panto in, I want to say Maidstone. It was in Kent. So we were talking about it all week. We had him on the show. I mean, absolute legend. And then halfway through the show, when we went to watch it, he just worked my name into the script because obviously... He's done it a long time, so ad-libbing for Brian, not a problem. So he just went, Scott Mills, at the top <laughs> of his voice. And I obviously he hadn't warned me, and it was hilarious. And everyone just kind of, everyone uh, just turned around and was like, yeah, hello. He's like, I think he said, where is Scott Mills? And, uh, and then they put a spotlight <laughs> on me. Great. But, yeah, I've had some great times at Panto. And what I'm really looking forward to is that it, it, I'm going to meet people that I would have probably never met in my business. I'm going to make new friends, and it's a shared experience. A bit like I did the Strictly tour, uh, even though I was very bad at dancing. They asked me to do the tour, which is an arena tour, which happens in the January after the series has just aired. So you go, I mean, we were at Sheffield, Nottingham, Glasgow, the O2, Wembley in London, and I was dancing badly in all of those venues. But what I loved about it was that I met people that I generally wouldn't cross paths with. People like, or I might interview them, but I wouldn't spend any time with them. People like Greg Wallace, yeah. Judy Murray became a friend from doing Strictly, Steve Backshaw, you know, a, a great people. And what I really enjoyed was being part of a massive production like that. And I think that is probably the nearest thing that I've ever done to doing what I'm about to do in Leicester. But I love I love the camaraderie of it. I love that we're all in this together and I will meet brand new people. And I think, and the guys from Imagine keep saying this to me, this is not supposed to be an ordeal. We want you to have a great time. Mm -hmm. We want you to, to go away from it going, that was brilliant. And that is exactly what happened. Even though I was terrible on the Strictly tour, I was so sad when that came to an end because I had the absolute time of my life for all the reasons I just said. You're absolutely right about the the sort of similarity between Strictly and uh, Panto. Obviously, Panto is a big production. Um, you know, you've got the junior ensemble, uh, the senior yeah. dancers, all the cast members, all the you know stuff that goes into lighting, costume, sound, yes. and everything else. I, and I it's very much, very much like that because a lot of Strictly, especially if you're quite a bad dancer, a lot of it is ridiculous costumes and dressing up. I mean, I was dressed up as a crab. I was dressed up as Uncle Fester <laughs> from um, from uh, the Adams family. That you know, it, a lot of it is 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 similar, and and also that whole thing, which I know you have to do in theatre, is make everything bigger. Uh, you know, if you're going to do a shrug, 
make it a big shrug. If you're going to do a sigh, make it a big sigh. So in many ways, I actually think that uh, there, are, there are similarities, as you, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, there is no... No such thing as overacting in Panto, but I was going to no. say I, I, I did. I did Panto with Brian Blessed back in 1993, and wow. you know one one of the joys uh, of working with people like that. Again, I would never have worked with him otherwise. No, is is the chats backstage, the incredible stories that all these that. people have, the shared experience. You will have yeah. an absolute ball. But what I want to know is how it came about because I heard a rumor that you mentioned on Radio Two that you quite fancied doing Panto. And some of the members of the staff in the Imagine office heard that. Is that true? <laughs> that is exactly true. <laughs> so I think it was, well, it would have been this time last year where, where everything is ramping up to Panto season. And my friend and now colleague, Vernon Kay, uh, was, he was announced quite late yep. that he was going to do one of uh, Imagine's shows in I, I want to say it was High Wycombe. High Wycombe, that was it. High Wycombe. I mean, very handy for Vernon. He doesn't live far away, <laughs> but yeah, he got announced quite late, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." Anyway, so we mentioned this on the show, and I said, "Do you know what? I would love to give that a go at uh, at some point." And I think maybe it was Laura, or they were listening in the office, yeah, and they were like, "Well, let's do it." <laughs> And that was, um, it was as organic as that, really. But, and then, after it had finished, and actually before Vernon joined us at Radio 2, I called him and, and I said to him, how was it? Did, you know, what was it like? And he said he had the best time. He had never done it before. Then he goes and wins Best Newcomer. And um, he, I said, I, I don't know whether to do it or not. What, do you think I'll enjoy it? Blah, blah, blah. And it, it was a no-brainer. He just said to me, do it. You will have the best time. And I trust Vernon. I've known him 20-odd years. And I know that when he enjoys something and gets his teeth into it, he means it. So that was the point where I was like, I'm going to give it a go. And as I learn more and more about what we're going to be doing, it gets more and more exciting. Some things that, that you know, with Strictly, there was a there was an element of um, of dread, like excitement, but also dread. With this, I don't have that. I'm just actually really looking forward to December, and that's great because generally, when celebrities get asked to do something, normally on TV, there's something terrible involved, or <laughs> it's for children in need, or it's for comic relief, where let's say you're on a treadmill for 24 hours um, <laughs> or you've got to do an abseil off of one of the tallest buildings in the UK. Things like that, uh, which are supposed to be horrible because then people hopefully will give lots of money to charity. I've done quite a few of those. This is not that. This is supposed to be an enjoyable experience and I, I already am. <laughs> Well, you certainly enjoy a challenge, as you've said, but you're, you're not just entering into this lightly because I'm told you've been phoning all of your showbiz mates who have done Panto mm. to get advice. And I'm told you're even getting singing lessons. Is that right? I'm trying to wait. OK, so there's a lady called Evie Burnett and she is Lewis Capaldi's vocal coach. But I know Evie from years ago because she was the X Factor vocal coach 10 or so years ago mm -hmm. so evie was uh like amazing like amazing woman very scottish and uh, as soon as the panto was kind of i knew i was going to do it the first person i rang was evie going <laughs> you've got to help me and she's like okay and she asked she's like let's see if you can hold a note and i had to send her a voice note and she was like not as terrible as i was expecting so me and her, I don't. She doesn't actually live terribly far from me. So before we do the show, I'm just going to get a crash course from Evie. I mean, she does Lewis Capaldi. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. uh, I mean, I'm in good hands. Then I've also spoken to my former dance partner from Strictly, Joanne Clifton, because what Joanne was great at 
on Strictly. I mean, I managed to stay in that show until Halloween. Mm -hmm. God knows how. Well, I, <laughs> I, I do know how because Joanne made it look great. I couldn't dance for Toffee, but I did enough quite easy steps choreographed by her to make it look good and then she did the rest of the work <laughs> she just kind of danced around me but i i am going to be speaking to joanne as well because she left strictly a few years ago but since then has been in so many theater shows um and that's what she does now so yeah i'm definitely getting advice from her because i believe there is going to be some dancing and i did a thing last i uh, know this year for eurovision with Natalie Cassidy, Sonia from EastEnders. Now, she is a fantastic actress and a great person. So I've been leaning on her in terms of how to learn the lines. So I think, I mean, I think I'm calling in the, the good people here, you know? Yeah, and, and there are others as well. And you'll hear about them on Scott's Radio 2 show um, before he leaves for Panto. No stranger <laughs> to Leicester. In fact, Joanne Clifton is actually in Leicester as we speak in Shrek on yeah. tour. Um, yeah. And you're no stranger. Of course, you were here in the summer for the fabulous yeah. Music in the Park event. I loved it. What an intro to my first year at Radio 2. I actually said this in a talk yesterday. They, they have like a Radio 2 away day, they call it where all the producers get together and they brainstorm ideas for the, for the coming year. And they asked me to do um, a little session. And the first opening question was, so you're nearly a year into Radio 2. How are you finding it? And what I said was, everyone's been so welcoming, which they have across the board. But what really cemented the feeling of, this is where I should be, this is where I belong, and this is where I want to be, was Leicester, Radio 2 in the park. Because at somewhere like Radio 2, everyone, everyone works different shifts. They're on different times of day. So I will see Zoe Ball now and again. I'll pop into Vernon's studio. I'll wave through the glass at Sarah Cox. But there is never really a time, apart from something like Radio 2 in the park, where we're all together. And I was um, up and down to Leicester quite a lot because the DIY SOS big build was not far away, just over the county in um, Risley. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I was spending a lot of time with Leicester as my base. It's somewhere that I've been to a lot over the years, but always at night time because I'd be DJing for the students. So I've been to Leicester, I want to say 20, 30 times over the years, but I've literally gone to one of the unis, <laughs> yeah. DJed, and then gone. So you're not really seeing it, you're just seeing it at night. Did you actually get a chance while you're in the park there, because it's right next to De Montfort Hall, did you get a chance yeah. to go and wander around the venue and have a look at it? I've already been. Yeah, uh -huh. so um, this was God, I think this was back in May or something. We had a whole day of photo shoots with me in the mayor costume, videos to promote it, um, like the official photos. So, yeah, I had a good wander around. Me and my partner, Sam, and my dog, Teddy, had a good, a really good look around. And what a venue. I can see why you get so many great shows there because it is, it's brilliant. What, what a, an intro. And also the city... I have this year already spent a lot of time in and I feel like I know my way around now, uh, which is good because I'm going to be living there from December. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, everybody's looking forward to uh, in the rest of the cast, looking forward to visiting your dressing room, because yeah. if you carry the scent of the studio that you have to the oh. dressing room, they will love it, won't they? Yeah, they will. So I had a... I like to have my home comfort. So what I did when I joined Radio 2 was I brought in a little diffuser. It's not expensive. It's And the studios aren't big. So it's kind of filled the room with a lovely... It smells like a spa in there. Even yesterday, we had people coming into the studio. The, uh, the girls have just been announced as the contestants for Junior Eurovision. They came in and the first thing they said was, it smells nice in here. Then who else did we have in the other day? Oh, Melanie C came in the other day and was like, 
first thing she said, oh, it smells great in here. So, yes, head to my dressing room, rest of yeah. the cast, because uh, it, it'll smell good. Having said that, I don't think Lizzo liked it, did she? Lizzo didn't. She said it smelled of feet. Um, <laughs> but she doesn't She doesn't know what she's talking about because she's outnumbered by, <laughs> I want to say, every other celebrity that's walked in there and, uh, and, and smelt the spa-like atmosphere. Now, should the theatre be ready for any strange deliveries? I don't know if you spend a, a lot of time online shopping, but I'm told, mm. you know, occasionally a vacuum cleaner might get delivered. Yes. The thing is... If I am living in Leicester for a month, which I will be, get this, I even planned my Christmas dinner with friends yesterday in Leicester because they were all going to come up and see me. So we um, we did that. Obviously, there will be things that I <laughs> need. So I don't know, maybe, I mean, definitely I'm going to need a lot of tights. So they, I might order some of those. Um, but yeah, if I'm going to order anything online, which I am partial to, I will probably get it delivered to the to the theatre. And it's true. All sorts of random things do arrive for me at Radio 2. Sometimes dog treats for my dog. Sometimes a, a, a Henry the Hoover did get delivered the other day. I yeah, I was hoping why. you'd ask me how I knew, actually. How did you know that? <laughs> because I'm a very good friend of your producer and have been for a very long time, Ben Stone. Ben. And uh, yeah. So <laughs> he, he told me about the scent and he told me about the, yeah, the delivery. Right. I was going to say, your research is top notch. <laughs> and here's why. Because you know Ben. So just be warned, De Montford, weird stuff might arrive. He also said you're probably going to need several coffees because you drink coffee like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> True. I'm not going to lie to you, Martin. I might have already bought my own travel kettle. Well, listen, I can tell you something that will cheer you up as well, because I've done Panto several times with Sam Bailey, yeah. and Sam yeah. Bailey has a slow cooker in her dressing room. And That's what she will true. do, she will invite everybody to bring in a bowl, and she will provide um, stuff between the shows on certain days for everybody. And it's very nice, let me tell you. What? So between shows, Sam Bailey from X Factor feeds us. She does. She will bring it in. She'll she will actually prepare it before the first show and it will be cooking away. And then in between <laughs> the shows, you just turn up with your bowl and your spoon and fork or whatever at her dressing room and you get fed. This is brilliant news. <laughs> OK, this is great. But I'm really looking forward to that now. And just talking about new homes, I think, you know, you've done your last show at Wogan House now, haven't you? Today is my first day. It's going to be weird because I've been a, a, a year in Wogan House and then today I'm going back to the studio I was in when I left Radio 1. So this is only a temporary measure because the brand new Radio 2 studios are just across the way from where Radio 1 is on the eighth floor at the uh, new broadcasting house. But in the interim period, until those studios are fully equipped and fully ready, yeah, I'm going into my old Radio 1 studio where I was for... 10 or so years. So that's going to be weird. What are you most looking forward to about Panto? I'm looking forward to Sam Bailey's dinners. <laughs> I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward to picking back up with people like Mark Reed, who I used to interview so much back in the day when, uh, you know, when A1 were in the charts. So, I mean, I know him. I've not seen him for years. Same with Sam. As soon as it was all announced that we were all going to be doing it together, she was because I've still got her number from back then. Mm -hmm. And she was like, we're going to have a right laugh. So despite the fact that Panto is a new experience for me, which I'm buzzing about, it's not the people around me, some of them, are not going to be strangers so it's going to be pick, uh, like picking up with old friends, you know? I have Jared Christmas I've worked with, who's incredibly yeah. funny. You'll have a ball He's with hilarious. Him. I've seen some of the videos. He's funny. So you're just going to have a, a fabulous time. I'm really excited about seeing you. The only sad thing for me is that after 10 years as Dame there, I'm not there yet this year. I've taken a year out. So I was, in fact, as soon as you were announced, 
Ben Stones you messaged me. You decided to quit. <laughs> <laughs> ben Stones messaged me and said, I'm so excited that Scott is going to be working with you this Christmas. And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing it this year. So that's the only disappointment for me. But you will have an absolute ball. I can promise you that. I'm learning more and more about this um, crazy <laughs> panto world all the time. And the more I hear, the more I love it. I tell you what, Scott, I'm so excited that you're coming to the DeMott for Hall in Leicester. I'm so looking forward to seeing you as well thank you so much for talking to us thank you make sure you come martin and and give me an honest review just don't put it online i wouldn't <laughs> do that i promise having said that you might want to change your mind when you've done a few shows and you've seen how much the audiences are loving it really appreciate that, that was a lovely chat thank you so much martin it's been a pleasure scott thank you so much that's it for another episode i'm afraid as i said earlier there are many more fabulous guests still to come so please subscribe through your favorite podcast app and remember if you have any questions about imagine theory theatre or anything to do with pantomime in general, make sure you send it to us via the get in touch section of the website at imaginetheatre.co.uk and make sure you join me, Martin Ballard, next time for episode 68, the Christmas edition, when I'll be backstage at one of this year's Imagine Pantomimes. Thank you for listening to the latest edition of Just Imagine, the podcast series from Imagine Theatre. And you can find out more by going to www.imaginetheatre.co.uk.